Madinah when the Prophet migrated to Madinah. And the question was posed to the Prophet, who oh, the messenger of Allah, eh? if the sense of proud to, be, uh, to become one race or to, to, to honor one race or to fight and to struggle for one race is due to be Asobiya. This is the word Asobiya. Asobiya is, uh, I mean, uh, can be uh, conveniently uh, translated to be racism. Eh? And in Arabic, I mean, the, the question was posed to the Prophet, Ma, ma kiel What is actually Asabi? And the Prophet mentioned, I mean, uh, in a very simple manner, right? and a very clear manner. Al Asabiya, he and Tu'ayna Qawmat al Azul. Asabiya is when you actually, it is not about you are proud to be or to belong to one race, but Asabiya is when you try to do injustice to others while promoting one race. This is the fundamental principle that we have to uh, adhere. Meaning that nothing wrong for you to struggle for your own people, for your own race. But again, the principle is don't ever feel that you are more superior than others and resorting you to do injustices oppression, uh, undermining other races or other religions or other people. These are the fundamentals. Yeah? And these fundamentals are very much entrenched to the verse which I quoted earlier. I'm not using that verse to justify that uh, race-based politics is the way forward for this country. I just mentioned that we should be proud that we have the strength this nation, I, this one I agree to Stephen, eh? because this is our unique strength. We have multiracial, multiracial, and this is an opportunity for the Muslims in particular to project the true image of Islam. I remember just to share with you, because I was very much involved in the negotiation with the Saudi government in establishing King Salman Center for International Peace, which was I mean, terminated unilaterally by our uh, government recently. Uh, I asked uh, the special advisor to King Salman, who was appointed as a representative of Saudi government, I asked him, why do you choose Malaysia? He said, he said in Arabic, Ashraf, what about Islam? What do you understand by Islam? He even lectured me. Uh, he said that, Al-Islam Dinu Salah. Al Islam Deen al Ta'arif. Kulu Khasas al Islam, Mawjud fi Biladikum, Lan Yudah fi Biladina. He said, Ashraf, what is Islam? Islam is a religion of peace, that promotes peace. Islam is a religion that promotes uh, balance. And Islam is a religion that promotes coexistence. Meaning that appreciating differences of religion. Uh, races and so on. But all these characteristics of Islam did not happen and that did not even exist in our country. But all these characteristics are very much visible in your country. And this is why, actually, this is one of the reasons why he mentioned that King Salman purposely won this center to promote peace and to promote the authentic Islam because he wants to show to the world that Malaysia has its own strength. The strength is, yes, Islam is the religion of federation. Yes, Islam is the fundamental. But we never disregard, we never undermine other religions. And we are always proud to say that we are the only country in the world that has the largest statue representing Buddha, as mentioned by my friend Islam. In Kelantan, the sitting Buddha, the standing Buddha, the uh, sleeping Buddha, eh, all are the largest. And eh, where is it? In Kelantan. The largest statue, Lord Morgan, I was told the largest in the world. Where is it? In Batu Kira. The largest church in Bukit Jaya. Have we ever heard any instance of demonstration of uneasiness among the religion in Malaysia? Not only that, we have the highest number of holidays in the world. <laughs> yeah. Correct? Yeah. Why? Because 15 holidays very much dedicated to different religions in Malaysia. 
They can say that they are the, the top uh, champion of human rights, but they have to see as Malaysia. We are the highest, we have the highest holiday representing that we acknowledge, respect and honour differences and this is our strength. Unity in diversity. That we have to move forward and we have to really celebrate this difference. Uh, Moa's uh, question is uh, very fair. I mean, uh, the perception, connotation we pass is nothing beyond Kudu and Sharia. So, but the inception of pass in the 1961 was the struggle for independence. And then uh, there are uh, reference made to the, the headset of parliament and then in the memorandum of the government where it's beyond Sharia and Kudu law. I mean, for the case of uh, DEB, PAS was uh, consultated and provided our, our opinion. For the case of I mean, banking, 1983, prior to that, there was a motion in uh, PAS Youth uh, uh, Annual uh, Gathering at AGM for the need of the Islamic banking in Malaysia. And during the era of uh, our fourth Prime Minister, which is now our seventh Prime Minister, I mean, PAS was leading the, uh, the, the, the struggle against the uh, uh, ISA, AUKU, and so on and so forth, those uh, human rights kind of uh, issues. So, yes, recently being, being portrayed that PAS is always talking about Sharia, about Kudus, particularly in Kansan. But to be fair, if you analyze, if you look at the report, the budget, the, the program undertaken by the government, in Kelantan is beyond Sharia and Kudus. I mean, without the assistance from the federal government, without the royalty from the federal government, and we have been uh, been assisting those uh, needy, the poor in Kelantan uh, with very limited uh, resources. So, economy, uh, good governance, human rights, uh, always uh, the main issue champion uh, by far. And question by Nazrul about the uh, inclusivity of uh, past uh, prior to this and then after the Pakat uh, Raya days, we are seen as uh, exclusive with the non-Malay and pretty much very Malay and Muslim centric. Uh, the reasoning behind is pretty much because of the our relationship in, in Pakatan. When we were in Pakatan, uh, both parties uh, gained advantage. I mean, uh, DSP had the access to the uh, Malay, Serda, uh, Kelantan, Terengganu, and Kedah. And PAS also had the access to non Malay in Selangor, in Negeri Sembilan, in Penang, in Perak. I mean, we can have uh, like the case of uh, Kota Raja, very mixed uh, constituency. I mean, and uh, our candidate uh, won the seat. So, but after the Kota Raja being, for some reason, uh, being, being I don't know what the, 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 the official term, but being broken away or there's no more uh, divorce or whatever, there's no more relationship with us. Uh, but, and we did pass, we have our, our supporters club, they want him to and affiliate uh, for non Malays, non Muslims to be part, to be members of PAS. So these are the, the, the medium that we are undertaking to bridge the gap. But yes, the DG14 was pretty much uh, the tsunami against uh, Sunajit and YMDB. So the rejection for me is pretty much the push factor. Not so much the push factor towards Pakatan. That's why until today, the promises, the manifesto is being questioned. It's not that people accepted to Pakatan. It's the push factor against Najib, against, against the Sunajit, my apologies, and YMDB. So these are the main reasons why Pakatan uh, won the GD40. Yeah, uh, just to back up, uh, because it's after that, I don't know, we are not seeing. I think there's a misunderstanding to regard to the false dilemma, including are you Malay or Malaysian? This is something peculiar to modern people who uh, pretty much uh, into democracy or liberal democracy where 
I don't think it doesn't matter so much. But I think it's false because why? Because you can never erase or denounce the importance of identity politics, even in modern times. Even in advanced democracy like America and Britain, they are facing the same uprising of this race-based politics. Look at Trump. Although he was responding to economic issues with regard to the Bible Belt, uh, American people who being disenfranchised from economic growth, but the, the energy that he uh, made use to galvanize his support came from identity politics, Christian right, and, and white supremacy kind of uh, people. In Brexit, the same thing. The issue is about economic disenfranchisement again. But look at what happened uh, in Europe, right? in general, those who study in Europe, I'm more the world uh, study in Europe, right? In Hungary, in France, this is something peculiar to our, our civilization because uh, this is a false promise delivered by those enlightenment thinkers as if once you embrace liberal democracy, a la Fukuyama, you, have, you can easily erase or uh, lay down the importance of religion and race. I am proud of Thomas I'm a Malay person. At the same time, I'm also proud of Thomas as a Malaysian person. Because these are not mutually exclusive identities. <laughs> I derive my intellectual and spiritual strength from my race, which I define not as biological category, but as a civilization, cosmopolitan in nature. Look at what Dr. Muhammad Yankee did before when he tried to synthesize the Islamic uh, ideology the left-wing politics and Malay nationalism. I'm so emphasizing this is where we have common ground. We are not race-based political party. We are an ideological party based on Malay nationalism. Isn't that clear? It's not really a race-based, it's a nationalist party that champion not only for Malay but for the nation. So I think this uh, reduction of religious politics as something pejorative, you know, against the, the spirit of religious unity is a false dilemma. So that's Aristotle's. Yeah. Um, Stephen? Uh, you quoted Annalai Confucius, you quoted Guillaume Let me quote this uh, another writer, Stephen Singh. <laughs> this is from my second book, uh, Being in Malaysia. Page 62. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my third book is not that point about that quality. <laughs> um, yeah, after I say this, I, I think some of our friends here will be very happy. One of the most profound questions the Malaysian can be asked must be, are you a Malaysian first? In recent memory, many political leaders have declared their primary commitment towards a certain identity, whether it is I'm Malaysian first or I'm Malay first. I'm Chinese first, I'm Muslim first, and the list goes on. Why do I say profound? Because honestly speaking, if this question was posed to me, I would not know how to answer. It is as if asking me if my left hand is more important than the right hand, or my leg or my ears. It doesn't make sense for me at least to have to choose which part of my body defines me the most. The fact is, each part comes together to constitute to, to constitute the whole. <laughs> If I tell you who is my who is my favorite icon, 
I, I don't know whether you think that I'm liberal. One of my favorite characters is Hathor. But I have written it extensively, including in this book. Big uh, <laughs> 35 minutes of popular. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was once quoted for saying, let Malays be more Malay. If you want to deal with Pertuanan Melayu, it is not to ask Malays to be less Malay. Let Malays be more Malay. But before you accuse me of being the Rituanti, I'm sorry, the Rituanti, of the AP, for that, oh, look into the Hikayat. How tall? 300 years ago, 400 years ago, and our ancestors, when the Malay ancestor, imagine one day, the name is coconut tree eating his uh, sirih. Saya dah membayangkan bagaimana rupanya jika ada seorang Melayu yang hebat. Thinking when, when he was trying to imagine this, what 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 is the shape, what is the what is the face of an ideal Malay or great Malay? He wrote Hikai Hamtua, and in Hikai Hamtua, if you look, it, it is very Hamtua being the idealized ideal Malay in, in the imagination of our ancestors. He learned he has he learned twelve languages. He can speak twelve languages, many languages, including Chinese, Tamil. European languages, Jawi, Arab, Spanish. I want to congratulate Dr. Ashraf because he knows more than, more than two languages, three languages, Arabic. I'm not sure Chinese. But later, yeah, his, his children will know four languages at least. This is the benefit, the advantage of being in a diverse society, which I personally believe business as usual will not be able to deliver, at least to the majority of the people in this country. Finally, what I'm saying is, this. It should not be a dilemma in the first place, whether I'm a Malaysian player or what, whatever. Place. When we form Malaysia, and this is from historical research, you can read uh, Professor Arifid Omar if you want Bangsa Melayu. Bangsa, Bangsa Melayu. When we form Malaysia, we were creating a nation where it is okay to be Chinese or Malay, and yet at the same time be committed as a citizen of Malaysia. This is a unique characteristic of a rainbow nation. This is the real rainbow nation. Sorry, not South Africa. This is a unique characteristic of a rainbow nation that we have established together. We are unique among the countries in the world.
recent years that all the families have the same, I mean, the food. That means we can we have the same dream. That let us have the same dream. What we want in future? Okay? We want this country with its unique strength of diversity, different race, different religion. But we stand for one purpose: okay? having to respect each other trust each other, and to have a compassionate society that everyone would have lived with love and affection towards each other. I think with that, inshallah, we'll have Malaysia as a country that will always celebrate differences, and we have to continue to do this. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Inspiring discussion on domestic politics in Malaysia. This marks the end of the first session. Thank you, everyone. I'm so sorry we didn't take everyone's questions up here, but thank you for being such a great audience. Um, that's it. So, see you later.